So far, we've been talking about frequency distributions based on one single variable, which are easily visualized using bar charts or histograms. For example, a fund manager may want to categorize the stocks in a fund that he manages based on market capitalization, that is whether they are small cap, mid cap or large cap stocks. Now, what if he also wishes to subcategorize based on the industry representation? Well, the data can be summarized using a two-dimensional array as shown. In general, such tables are known as contingency tables, which allow us to analyze two variables at the same time. The rows represent attributes of one of the variables, and the columns represent attributes of the other variable. Just for an exercise, can you identify what type of data we're dealing with in this example? You should identify both as categorical data. Market cap is ordinal data as there is a logical order of small to large. Industry is nominal as there is no logical order to it. Note that the variables for contingency tables must be categorical and have a finite number of categories. The data in each cell shows the frequency with which we observe two attributes simultaneously. This is known as a joint frequency. For example, we can infer from this table that there are six large-cap utility stocks in the portfolio. The total of frequencies for a row or column is termed the marginal frequency for that attribute. For example, there is a total of 85 energy stocks. Also, note that a contingency table can be expressed in terms of absolute or relative frequencies where the sum of all observations must equal 100%. One application of a contingency table is to use the values to determine whether two variables are independent. The chi-square test of independence, which you'll learn later in this course under hypothesis testing, is one such approach to test if the variables are independent using the contingency table. One way to visualize a contingency table is to use a heat map where color and shade can be used to reflect frequency. For example, light green could reflect zero, and a deepening shade to dark red will reflect higher frequencies. The heat map for our example will look like this. Another approach to visualize a contingency table is to use a tree map where block size is used to reflect frequency. We first draw a block to reflect the total number of observations and segregate this block based on one of the attributes. For example, we first segregate based on industry, where each industry has its own primary color. Obviously, energy has the largest block as there are the most number of energy stocks. Next, we segregate based on the other attribute, which in this case is market cap. Darker colors are used to represent large cap stocks. One special kind of contingency table is a 2x2 two two array called a confusion matrix. Analysts use a confusion matrix to evaluate the performance of a classification model. Suppose an analyst develops a model to predict if a company will default on its debt. One way of testing the model is to feed it actual past data and recording the corresponding predictions. If the actual data is a default and the corresponding prediction is also a default, we add 1 to the yes yes cell. If the actual is no default, but the model predicts a default, we add 1 to the no yes cell. You get the idea. Tally up and we get the confusion matrix. This cell reflects the false positives and this cell reflects the false negatives from the model. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.